From the DMZ to the NATO front, this is CRN. Welcome to the Lightning Round. Welcome. Hi everyone, Donald Lowry here, and I'm the marketing director for Contra Radio Network. You know what helps me sleep well? Physical gold. Gold IRAs help people diversify. The best gold IRA company is Augusta Precious Metals, with thousands of happy customers. Learn why Americans get gold IRAs. Get Augusta's free guide. Text CONTRA to 68592. That's C-O-N-T-R-A to 68592. Or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Well, hello, and welcome to the Dave Kirshner Lightning Round Podcast. I am your host, coming to you from the Augusta Precious Metals studio. Uh, you just heard their commercial. That's a new uh, sponsor for us uh, over at the Contra Radio Network for John Jeffers and I. And uh, we are also now being rebroadcast on the Blessed News Network. Uh, you can get to them at blessed.news online. And um, so for the folks that are listening to this show for the first time, we are in episode 140. And I'm checking my notes. I actually did the math. I looked it up. We are 443 days away from the next election. Thankfully, we're getting closer and closer to removing the idiot in chief. And we are currently in week 134. We're finishing week 134 of the uh, quadrennial hunger games. And uh, was it 46 quadrennial hunger games? Yeah. And the summer did not disappoint. There was so much idiocy going on throughout the summer that it was really difficult for me to not uh, uh, put something up. I, well, I did, I did put out a, a, a quick hit, um, uh, quick hit number seven on uh, September, or I'm not September, duh, on uh, July 1st. Um, because there were three SCOTUS decisions that were handed down at that time, and um, one of them was pretty monumental in ending affirmative action. And, of course, the left became completely apoplectic. So that was fun, so I felt compelled to, 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 to bring that up. But we've also had, uh, over the course of the summer, we've had a lot of new uh, revelations regarding the Biden crime family. So... Uh, I'm not going to rehash everything that happened over the summer, but these are some of the highlights. Um, they, they are his, his sweetheart plea deal got basically broken down and thrown out because they tried to sneak in blanket immunity for all future crimes. And the judge was like, yeah, no, um, there's been some new information about, uh, January 6th, uh, and, and ironically, it was uh, Jake Lang and his folks that uh, reached out to John Jeffers and I about uh, rebroadcasting our shows on, on the Blessed News Network. Um, I had a brief conversation with him from his jail cell um, where he's coming up on on a, on a thousand days of, of basically being a political prisoner uh, with no trial, no nothing. Uh, he's just being held in perpetuity. Um, I did Google Jake and, and, you know, I don't know if he did what he did, but it doesn't seem like anything that he did would be worthy of two plus years in jail. Uh, so that doesn't make any sense to me, uh, why some people have had their constitutional rights taken away from them. Um, you know, jury of your peers, innocent until proven guilty. It's one of the hallmarks backbones of our of our country and our society and and uh 
this weaponized DOJ seems to have taken all of that and just kind of thrown it out the window because of political expediency. Um, so I got, I got four things I'm going to talk about here. One of them actually is about January 6th. So uh, let's get in it. All right, this first one is uh, from Fox News. And, you know, I, I try to get my news from a lot of different sources. Well, I guess I should stop here and say uh, and kind of introduce myself for the folks that are new to the show. Um, my name is Dave Kirshner. I am an IT analyst. I've been doing that for about 25 years. Uh, I'm married, have two girls that are in college. So I'm an empty nester. Um, I have written a five-part fictional post-apocalyptic dystopian uh, series. Um, I've also written uh, two uh, non-fiction books, one dealing with home remedies, poultices, salves, and tinctures, and another one dealing with uh, uh, preparing to prepare. It's for mostly geared toward people that are becoming more um, disenfranchised with the Fed, with the Alphabet Mafia, with the three-letter agencies. Uh, you pick it, and people are turning away from it, especially mainstream media. Um, and I started this podcast probably two years ago, two and a half years ago. And, um, so this is episode 140. Let me check my, uh, website. You can find out everything you want to know about me on my website, which is davidjkirshner.com. Um, but as for the podcast, I started that in uh, February of 2021. Uh, so what's that? 22, 23, two and a half years. Uh, but I take summers off because uh, my wife is a high school biology teacher. So I spend time with the wife and kids while they're home from school and what have you. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm an avid outdoorsman. Do a lot of hunting and fishing and camping. And um, I actually I, I do two shows a week. Um, and the midweek show is all about preparedness and self sufficiency and. You know, it could be off-grid stuff. It could be um, uh, working with different types of, dealing with all different types of scenarios and, and things of that nature with in, in the form of preparedness and self-sufficiency. I recently rebranded that after um, we decided to get rebroadcast on uh, the Blessed News Network uh, because what I took from Jake was that they were looking for just the lightning round. Uh, they probably would publish the other one, but I don't think that's a good fit for what he's trying to do. So I rebranded that midweek show uh, to the Kirshner Files, and then the weekend show, which is a review of the week that was, and the lunacy coming out of DC um, is, is still the lightning round. So... Uh, but everything that you, if you want to listen to old episodes or whatever, everything's on the website under the podcast uh, uh, menu. So you can go see everything that I did for the last two and a half years under the brand of The Lightning Round. Uh, I just posted the first episode of The Kirshner Files in a new page there. Plus there's three pages of archives, one for every year, 2021, two, and three. Um, so there you go. Um so that's an introduction to me. <laughs> I'm trying to be a better uh, person and uh, be a better role model, Christian. Um, so uh, you might find that a few of the older episodes are NSFW or not safe for work. Um, but I'm going to try and try and do better. And uh, so we'll see how that goes and how long that lasts, you know. Because, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, immune to backsliding. So, all right, now we're going to get into it. All right, here we go. And, okay, so this first one is from Fox News. It's, it's something I found on Instagram. Uh, it is uh, Jesse Waters talking about um, what is going on with January 6th. Right now, uh, looks like oh, there's no dates on it. It was about a week ago uh, that this happened. So you might already know about it, but uh, I'm going to play it for you. And so you can hear the audio, but uh, I can see it on my screen. So here it goes. Fox News. 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 Fox
Fox News alert. The January 6th committee has destroyed their records, video depositions, data, transcripts, documents, all missing. Democrat Benny Thompson told House Republicans in a letter, quote, the select committee did not archive temporary committee records. The select committee was not obligated to archive all video recordings of transcribed interviews or depositions. That's strange. They spent two years investigating and then they just put it in the shredder? Huh. Oh. Interesting. They literally destroyed the evidence that they used to help put people in jail, like Jake Lang and others. Um, I just find it remarkable that uh, I keep finding these articles, and they're linking back to Blaze uh, News, which is um, Glenn Beck. Oh, I had a brain fart there, uh, which is Glenn Beck's news channel. Uh, and there was an article here, and it, I got this email on August 3rd. And it says that um, it's, an, it's an article titled, I'm a little pissed off, former Capitol Police Chief tells Tucker Carlson in leaked Fox News interview that January 6th events were a cover-up. So, and, and, and the only part that I can read is what's in this link in my email, because when I click the read more link, it takes me to Blaze News, but then the, the article's no longer there. So either they had to take it down, or there's something nefarious going on. So I find that interesting. And what it says is, former Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund told Tucker Carlson in a controversial interview that everything appears to be a cover-up as it pertains to the January 6, 2021 protests at the U.S. Capitol. Although Fox News kept the interview under wraps, the National Pulse has begun releasing segments wherein Sund provides critical insights. And then you click the Read More link, and it says, This page isn't working. If the problem continues, contact the site owner. And I said, Okay, great. So if I go in here, and I take away all of the URL except for Blaze News, and then I go scroll down here to the bottom, and there's another link down here, another article, um, that says, oh, where'd it go? I just had it. Well, now they just took the whole link down to this article. And it was another article about January 6th. So something's going on, folks. And I just find it very, very interesting that the more we're learning about this, the more people are pushing them to see the, the video that they keep hiding from everybody. Which I also thought was really interesting that they, they brought in a professional producer who added sound to the video feeds from the Capitol where no sound was actually recording. They literally added sound to make it think, make everybody think it was an actual riot. And that it was a, it was a silent film is what it was. It was a color silent film and they just pulled the wool over everybody's eyes. And now we're finding that they actually just destroyed all the evidence. So I find that very, very interesting. And it just, it, Nothing surprises me anymore, uh, to be honest with you. Um, nothing associated with this surprises me. And, and I've said it before. You know, I think that the January 6th was not an insurrection. I thought it was total crap. Yeah, it was a protest. But you know what it was? It did not ever once rise to the level of a BLM pre peaceful protest. They didn't burn any cop cars. They didn't burn down city blocks. Yeah, they broke some windows and they entered the Capitol. Okay? But that basically is about it. They tried to pin uh, an officer's death on the protesters, which was not the case. They had video of him walking around, and then he had a heart attack later. The only person that died was Ashley Babbitt. And she was shot by Capitol Police, so... I, I, this, this whole thing stinks, and that's my take on it. Anyway, so I wish I could find this stupid article because it's really irritating me. Um, well, I don't know. It's gone now. Oh, well. Next. All right. And in the world of 
DEI and ESG scores. We have, it, it, it's tough to listen to. I'm going to play it, but it's tough to listen to because PragerU has put kind of a soundtrack over it. So it, it's difficult to get that to fade into the background so you can hear what he's saying. Uh, but basically, it's the CEO of BlackRock. And uh, BlackRock and, um, oh, what's the other one? Uh, there's another big one. They're competitors. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I can't remember them right now. Um, it'll come to me. But uh, it's the CEO of BlackRock basically telling the interviewer and the audience that they are the ones, because they have such a huge uh, presence in terms of the, um, the number of shares that they own in a particular company, that they can force this, these companies to do their bidding when it comes to DEI, uh, the Alphabet Mafia, and ESG scores. So here's, here's the CEO of BlackRock explaining exactly what they're doing. BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. If you don't achieve these levels of impact, your compensation could be impacted. BlackRock alone has about ten trillion dollars in investments. If you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or rape, Vanguard Group. That's the other one. Just popped in my head, and I had to say it before I forgot. Sorry. Here we go. Composition of your team. You're going to be impacted. These large asset managers use their tremendous voting power to compel CEOs to implement these leftist policies. It's going to have to force change. It's an attack on our representative democracy, on our economic freedom, and on our individual liberty. I don't do something more radical. I thought about that as the board. I just thought about more radical things we could do to enhance diversity and inclusion. Every citizen of the firm has to understand what is acceptable behavior and what are unacceptable behavior. What's your roots? It's a ruse to confuse you so you don't know that it's an attack on our founding principles. You have to force behaviors at BlackRock. So they're forcing these companies to go woke. And if you don't go woke, then they short your stock or they do a mass sell-off or whatever it is that they have at their disposal. And they basically tank the company and, and pull all of their uh, investment out of the company. And that's basically what they're doing. They're holding them hostage and saying, hey, if you don't do this, Mr. CEO, your compensation package is going to be next to nothing. No golden parachute for you. We're going to make sure you get nothing on your way out the door. But here's the thing. Now they're starting to get lawsuits filed against the companies. And in this, this article here, Target, which famously put out all of their all of their pride BS with uh, bikini bottoms for for men to tuck because they think they're women which I think is a mental disorder I really have a hard time with the alphabet mafia I really do um, but there there are people within the alphabet mafia now that are still or that are that are waking up to the fact that it's not okay for Grown men in drag to be gyrating in front of third graders. I mean, how sick do you have to be to think that that is an okay activity? How demented are you as a parent to think, oh my goodness, I think we need to educate our children, so we're going to take them to these pride parades where men are walking around with silicone chest plates made out to be uh, like women's breasts, there are women walking down the street with strap-ons on, and there are people wearing next to nothing, and all they have is some lettering on their back that says, slap my ass as hard as you can. I love it. This is the kind of stuff that, that I just cannot comprehend that these people think is acceptable in any form of society. It just doesn't make any sense. And... I just, I am, I am not going to play make-believe with these people that think they're the opposite gender or these people that are furries or think that they're, you know, some other type of species. I, oh, I think I'm a cat. So every question you ask me, I'm going to answer with meow, meow, meow. 
No, you need severe psychological help. You need something that society cannot provide if you think that this is 100% normal because it's not and I'm sick of it and I'm not playing make believe with any of these people. I'm not going to talk to their imaginary friends for the for the guy on the street corner in downtown Columbus who's got schizophrenia and has nine imaginary friends. I'm not going to talk to them because I'm not going to play make believe with them. So you can take your pronouns and you can get to stepping. You can take your gender dysphoria and your confusion and and get to stepping. You got to go get your own help because Society at large is not going to be able to help you. And here's another thing that I'll share with you. If you have triggers, that's on you. Society at large is not responsible for the things that trigger you. It is your responsibility to control yourself and mitigate your triggers. If you get triggered because I say she, her, and you want to go by they, them, that's a you problem. I'm going by the fact that I can see that you are dressed as a woman. I see long hair. I see makeup. There are breasts. You're wearing stockings. You're wearing high heels. Whatever it is that told me through my synapses that that's a woman and I said, oh, hey, how are you doing? And you don't like you or, hey, what is she uh, working on or whatever? If, you know, I use the wrong pronoun. You go, oh, my God, they go by they them, Dave. You can't do that. Wrong. I'm not playing make-believe. That's a man, that's a woman. If they confuse me, I'll apologize because they've dressed in, a, in an odd fashion that I can't tell the difference. But by and large, 99.9% .9 of the time, I can tell the difference. So I'm not playing make-believe. But now, the CEO of BlackRock saying we got to force behaviors and make these CEOs bow to our will and kiss our ring and, and, and embrace DEI and ESG scores or else we're going to tank your, your company or whatever they're going to do. Now, lawsuits are being filed against these companies like Target because uh, America First Legal filed a shareholder lawsuit against Target in response to the retailer's pride merchandise that resulted in significant backlash, boycotts, and a drop in stock price. You would think that these large corporations would see what happened to Budweiser and Imbev and Bud Light. All they did is put up one social media post congratulating a confused young man who thinks he's a woman with a beer can with his effigy on it. They have not recovered and it's been four months. I watched videos of bikers at Sturgis where the beer tents, where they had Budweiser and Bud Light tent logos, completely empty. Nobody is going back to those products until they're satisfied. And it doesn't matter what they have done to this point, they are not satisfied. So customers are not coming back. I was a, an avid Bud Light drinker. I liked it. It was, it was the right balance for me. I have not bought a single can of Bud Light since, and I have changed over to either Coors Light or Miller Light. I'm not doing it. I'm not supporting their agenda, and I'm not going to play make-believe with them. You want to earn my money, start treating me with respect. And that's what everybody else in this country has gone with. They're like, no, you don't respect me as a consumer. You don't respect me as a customer. Um, or as somebody that has uh, different beliefs than you. You are, in effect, trying to make me accept something that I am adamantly, Vietnam vehemently, or religiously against. I'm not doing it. So Target is now rightfully being, being sued by their stockholders, which I think is a great idea. Um, and yeah. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. We'll, it, uh, uh, here's something that they did say. Many customers were outraged with the pride displays um, uh, They because Target famously stunned customers in May when massive June Pride Month displays were unveiled featuring everything from female-style swimsuits that can be used to tuck male genitalia to mugs that said gender fluid 
The polarizing Pride merchandise also included onesies and rompers for newborn babies, a variety of adult clothing with, so with slogans such as Super Queer, Party Supplies, Home Decor, Multiple Books, and a Grow at Your Own Pace sauces, Saucer Planter. Many customers were outraged and boycotts caused a variety of banks to downgrade Target's stock. Target's market value was at was over 74 billion before the tri Pride Blade. Blah! Target's market value was over 74 billion before the Pride displays made national news, as tracked by Dow Jones Market Data Data Group. As of Wednesday, Target is valued at 60.3 billion. They lost 14 billion dollars in market value because they went woke. Yeah, if I were a shareholder, I'd be pissed. I, 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 <sighs> let's take a break. How about that? Okay, we'll be right back. You know what helps me sleep well at night? Physical gold. I'm concerned about what the Biden administration is doing. And I decided to learn more about gold IRAs to help me diversify. You know, did you know you can buy gold for your IRA or 401k? And gold can't be tracked like digital currency. No one has to know what you're buying. And there's no way to print more. My best resource for gold IRAs is Augusta Precious Metals. Their track record is no less than phenomenal. They have thousands of happy customers. And they are absolute best. They are amazing. Learn why thousands of Americans are getting gold IRAs as part of their retirement portfolios. You need to contact Augusta Precious Metals and get their free guide. I'm serious about this. So text CONTRA to 68592. Again, text C-O-N-T-R-A to 68592. CONTRA to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Have you or someone you know ever had a hard drive crash? Or maybe your cell phone or tablet died, taking all of your pictures with it. You've thought about backing up your data, but all of the plans out there cost too much money for just a little bit of storage space. Well, now there's a solution. Got backup? That's right, Got Backup will allow you to back up unlimited devices, up to 6 terabytes of data, for only $9.97 a month. And that's not all. You can earn commissions by referring friends and family too. Got Backup is the only data storage center that allows you to earn income on your referrals. Check out Got Backup now. Log on to john-jeffers.com. That's john-jeffers.com. Log on now. All right, and we're back. So I, I, that was really bothering me that I couldn't find that article about January 6th. Um, but something that they that uh, it did say was that um, the uh, information from the interview that Fox News was trying to bury with Jesse Waters' interview of uh, the former police chief with Capitol Police um, was being released on... Uh, by a group called the National Pulse. So I googled it and I found it. Um, so what it goes on to say is that in the hour-long interview, uh, former Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund laments the behaviors of then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi as well as Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Mark Miley, who he says had intelligence to suggest problems on Capitol Hill which they failed to communicate with Sund and his cops on the ground. Sund is quoted as saying, if I was allowed to do my job as the chief, we wouldn't be here. This didn't have to happen. Sund begins around 19 minutes into the conversation, during which he describes himself as pissed off about being lambasted in public over the events. Sund has written a book, Courage Under Fire, about his experiences. Having served as a police officer for over 30 years, including taking over as chief of the United States Capitol Police in 2019, Sund explains the events leading up to January 6th, including prior to the incident at the Capitol itself and the aftermath, appeared to be a cover-up. He's quoted as saying, everything appears to be a cover-up, so, explaining that most things to do with his department were political, specifically because he reported to politicians 
including then Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. Like I said, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, Sund explains, but when you look at the information and intelligence they had, the military had, it's all watered down. I'm not getting the intelligence. I'm denied any support from National Guard in advance. I'm denied National Guard while we're under attack for 71 minutes. The full interview has thus far been hidden from the public at the behest of Rupert Murdoch's increasingly left-wing Fox News channel, which unceremoniously fired its primetime host Tucker Carlson, alleging as part of a private settlement with Dominion Voting Systems. It sounds like they were hiding the intelligence, Carlton quizzed, to which Sund suddenly responds, could there possibly be actually, they kind of wanted something to happen, it's not a far stretch to begin to think that, it's sad when you start putting everything together and thinking about the way this played out, what was their end goal? So, here's the thing. The other article that was on Blaze News was an article about how there were planted federal agents within the crowd and they were the ones actually doing the inciting. They were yelling at the crowd, encouraging the crowd to break into the Capitol, to break the windows, to basically go on an unsupervised tour of the Capitol building, go into the congressmen's and senators' offices, go into the Senate chambers or the House chambers. And, 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 and in some cases, when, when Tucker Carlson got a hold of the video from Mark Meadows being got it released to him, suddenly people were starting to get released from jail or they had their sentences reduced or some facsimile thereof. And I just think the whole thing is total, it's total BS. It was not an insurrection in any way, shape or form. These people that were there, I almost was there. And unfortunately, well, it's kind of fortunate and unfortunate. I really wanted to be there, but work being what it was, I couldn't get away. So I didn't go, and I watched it on TV with everybody else, and I just kept thinking to myself, you're in the nation's capital, and I don't see one deuce and a half anywhere with troops filing out. I don't, you know, I see some makeshift barricades that, you know, you see at concerts and sporting events, and, you know, the Capitol Police tried to fire off tear gas, um... They actually had video of some of them, you know, kind of laughing about, hey, watch this, as they throw the, as they pull the pin and throw the tear gas canister, only to have the crowd pick it up, throw it back at them. And suddenly the wind shifts and the cops are now getting all the tear gas. So it, the whole thing stinks. And I don't trust anything that the DOJ is doing with this. And I'll tell you why. It leads into another article that I found on the National Pulse, where... This was posted 21 hours ago by Jack Montgomery. Um, so it was posted August 17th. or Yeah, August 17th. So it was posted Thursday. And it's titled, January 6th Trump judge is close relative of dangerous Jamaican Marxists. Well, that's a snappy headline. Let's see what it says. Democrat donor judge, Den Democrat donor judge Tanya Chukton who is overseeing special counsel Jack Smith's prosecution of Donald Trump of Donald Trump over January 6th is a close relative of dangerous Marxist who operated in her native Jamaica. Chuckkin's grandfather Frank Hill and great uncle Kenneth Hill were imprisoned during the British colonial era era with governor Sir Arthur Richard describing Kenneth in particular as the probably the most dangerous subversive agent in Jamaica. The judge, a Barack Obama appointee in Washington, D.C., along with her husband, Peter Krauthammer, have been accused of handling January 6th defendants in a highly political way, complaining in court that they should not be compared to Black Lives Matter rioters and imposing unusually harsh prison sentences, in some cases even when prosecutors sought no time behind bars at all. She has strongly implied she believes Donald Trump is himself guilty of January 6th offenses in some of her rulings, stating in court that it is not patriotism, it is not standing up for America, to stand up for one man who knows full well that he lost instead of the Constitution he was trying to subvert, for example. She also worked for Trump-Russia hoax dossier firm Fusion GPS in the past. The game is rigged, folks! The fix is in! You got this judge 
sitting on the bench and you expect 45 to get a fair shake with Jack Smith's witch hunt. Fourth indictment now just came out, one in uh, Georgia. Trump had scheduled a uh, press conference for uh, Monday, uh, which now he has heeded the, the, the legal advice of his lawyers and has canceled that meeting and has issued a release saying that uh, he's going to be releasing the evidence that exonerates him uh, through legal channels was the wording that he used. So I, now there's, there's also polling out now that says that the majority of Americans believe that the uh, indictments against Trump are in fact politically motivated um, and it was split pretty much down political or down, uh, yeah, down political lines for um, whether or not they thought he was guilty of, of some of these crimes. I mean, <laughs> look, January 6th happened in 2020. It is now summer of 2023. Why? It just seems like there's a huge coincidence. Every time there's some new bombshell allegation against the uh, the coked up first son, uh, the next day Trump's indicted for something. I can't be the only one that's noticed this. And if January 6th happened two and a half years ago, yeah, two and a half years ago, why are they waiting until the precipice of the next election cycle to start releasing all of these grand jury indictments? There's no way that this isn't political. I, I just think it's crap. I, I, how can you not think that this is, that this is not coincidence. This was pre-planned for these indictments to come out. Uh, they said it would take 10 years to unravel the mystery of Biden and Ukraine, and they did. And they started finding the money trail. And now the, the FBI is compromised. The DOJ is severely compromised. Who knows what DHS and the CIA are up to these days. But I would say all of these three-letter agencies can't be trusted. None of them. All right, I got one more article. Next. In other news, uh, there's there's a few things here that uh, seem to be coming straight from the the leftist playbook. Uh, one is uh, is is renewable energy. Uh, one is you know obviously the alphabet mafia, uh, and then their other new favorite thing that's been going on for some time is climate change, and there was a court case in Montana where the judge has sided with youth activists in a landmark climate change case. Basically, what the judge said was that they found that the Montana state's policy used to evaluate requests for fossil fuel permits is unconstitutional because it does not force agencies to evaluate the effects of greenhouse gas emissions. And they show a picture of all of the little plaintiffs. And I don't know what we did to irritate white women, but all of these climate change activists in this picture are either white women or emasculated white men. And you can't even call them men at this point. None of them are over the age of 22, according to the article. And it just, this, when I got this, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. They, they basically got to put on, um, a, a, it was a, it was a two week protest basically. And they used that as their evidence. And it was, this judge has lost his mind. I, I I don't know what Julia Olson, uh, no, she was the attorney for the kids. Um, 
The ruling in the first-of-a-kind trial in the U.S. establishing a government duty to protect citizens from climate change. Meanwhile, the bulk of Canada's on fire. And, oh, don't pay no attention to the satellite video where you see all the fires spontaneously start at the exact same time. How, how can you not look at those satellite images of all those fires starting at the exact same time in the regions that they started as not some kind of payback for the uh, clogging up of Ottawa streets during the trucker protest? I mean, a lot of those truckers were coming from Western Canada. And what do you know? Western Canada is now on fire. We've been dealing... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just surprised my garden grew a single tomato. We've had so much... Uh, wildfire smoke over here in in central Ohio. It, it oh. anyway. Uh, the attorney for the angry white girls uh, declared that it's a huge win for Montana, for youth, for democracy, and for our climate. As fires rage in the West, fueled by fossil fuel pollution, today's ruling in Montana is a game changer that marks a turning point in this generation's efforts to save the planet from the devastating effects of human-caused climate change. So, I, I, you can't help but just shake your head at this. You're just looking at it like, are you kidding? What? Emily Flower, a spokesman for the Montana Attorney General, Austin Knudsen, called the ruling absurd and said the office planned to appeal. She said the ruling was not surprising from a judge who let the plaintiff's attorneys put on a week-long taxpayer-funded publicity stunt that was supposed to be a trial. Attorneys for the 16 plaintiffs, none of whom were over the age of 22, presented evidence during the two-week trial in June that increasing carbon dioxide emissions are driving hotter temperatures as well as more drought and wildfires. Those changes are harming the young people's physical and mental health, according to experts brought in by the plaintiffs. You know what's affecting their physical and mental health more than ozone and carbon dioxide emissions, colleges. Colleges are affecting their physical and mental health more than anything else because all these people have learned is how to be a victim. You want to you wanna, you wanna invite some change? Why don't you go visit one of those uh, African countries that's got children out there mining cobalt so you can drive an EV car? Why don't you... Go have a conversation with China about their manufacturing processes and their sweatshops for the designer gear that you like to wear. But no, they want to go and blame the country and the state of Montana for their physical and mental health. It's just the amount of crap that comes from the left is just mind boggling. Uh, the article concludes with the following. The state argued that even if Montana completely stopped producing CO2, it would have no effect on a global scale because states and countries around the world contribute to the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. And I think it goes without saying, we kind of need CO2. The trees love it. Kind of need that so they can produce the oxygen that we need. I... These kids are, not only are they being groomed by a bunch of leftist wackos in elementary schools through high schools, once they get to college, then it's all the climate change stuff and all of the, you know, in-your-face alphabet mafia stuff. It's just, it's, it's almost too much to take sometimes, folks. So, anyway, that's the show. Uh, welcome to the lightning round for the people that are joining us, uh, from the Blessed News Network. Um, I have new shows that come out every weekend on Saturdays, uh, for, uh, the lightning round and, uh, shows for the Kirshner Files, which is preparedness and self-sufficiency. Those come out on Wednesdays and those are available. Uh, both shows are available. Uh, wherever you find your podcasts, but the Kirshner Files is under the Contra Radio Network banner, 
So do a search for that where you go find your uh, podcast. And you'll be able to find this show under that banner as well. But you'll also be able to find it under the Blessed News Network banner. So uh, that's it for me. We'll be, you know, we're getting back into it. We're getting into full swing of things here. Now that everybody's back to school. So, uh, 443 days, folks. Start counting them down because it's going to be a real interesting uh, march through history for 443 days. All right. Be good. Stay safe. Keep your head on a swivel. I'm out. Happy Hunger Games. And... May the odds be ever in your favor.